Monaco is one of the toughest tracks in terms of driver workload because there's very little time where the driver can make changes on his steering wheel. First of all, you're thinking about the, the driving lines, uh, the braking points, your driver inputs in terms of your steering, your pedals, you're thinking about the tires, you're th thinking about the settings, how you can make most out of those during each corner of the lap. And you're really in the moment. And you always, when you go to a corner, you recall the last time you've been through that corner before and what can you do better. On top of that, he can adjust the balance of the car with the rotaries and the buttons on the steering wheel. He can adjust the brake balance or the shaping of the brake balance within the braking event. He can adjust the differential, which can make the car more understeer or oversteery. And he can also increase or decrease the engine braking again to affect the balance of the car. One lap is, is just uh, maximum performance over the 3.3 kilometers of Monaco and is only 70 seconds. So it's a very quick lap. There's practically no straight lines. Even what is classified as straight in Monaco, you always have some, some steering lock on and the time between corners, it's minimal. Uh, it's at best uh, five seconds into the first corner and seven seconds uh, around the fast corner in, in the tunnel. The driver is so busy with steering wheel throttle and brakes that there's very little time left for any other type of adjustment. Monaco is a very punishing track. There's no runoffs. You just got barriers or concrete walls. So the driver needs to build up his speed through the weekend, step by step. If you make a mistake, it's a big expensive crash and sometimes can get you out of qualifying altogether if you make a mistake in, in FP3, for example. As a driver during a hot lap, there's quite a few things that you are consistently thinking about. It's not just, you know, driving, obviously. There are some inputs that with practice, they become pretty automatic. For example, Golovang laps in practice. You're really trying to bring on the, the muscle memory for certain things and uh, you start to know exactly in which corners, which settings you prefer to use. And also, I would say shift points. That's a pretty common thing that first becomes pretty automatic. And uh, we obviously have to shift lights, but we also have a shift beep into our ear, so that really helps that. There are about 25 upshifts and 25 downshifts around Monaco and uh, you can adjust your diff for brake balance a couple of times maybe in some specific places. On top of that, you have loves where you have more than 180 degrees of steer, so you tend to cross your arms there. And sometimes actually we see some unwanted um, button changes there because the steering wheel gets very close to his legs and maybe the driver's bumping a rotary or a button. So we tend to install some specific uh, guards, glue on the steering wheel, some guards that will protect the rotaries that are getting close to the driver's legs. There's many things uh, in the steering wheel that corner by corner we're changing in terms of brake bias. Um, we have a bit of radio communication with the team. Uh, we have different engine settings. Um, obviously we're shifting non-stop, you know, up and down and you want to be accurate with that. Um, got the DRS at the, at the back of the wheel and these things. So it's all about practice, all about repetitions and preparation. And it doesn't come easy, but easier for sure. It's a slow track. The top speed is around 290 kilometers. So we don't get to eighth gear. We have only seven gears to play with. And Loves is the slowest corner of the whole championship where we take first gear there and we get very close almost to the idling speed of the engine. Being only 3.3 kilometers and a slow track, the, the upshifts and downshifts are not as many as at other venues, but I can guarantee that the, the driver uh, has got a lot on his plate. Your vision and being able to react what you see is crucial. Where we're actually looking at in, in the car, normally on the straights, it's a lot of the times it's the shift lights on the wheel. You want to be accurate in the shifting. You're always looking at the lines as well, trying to avoid any, any bumps on, on straight, not to scrub any speed. And then when you're coming to a corner, you're looking at the line and then you're looking at the brake point. And during braking, you start to shift your focus to the apex 
and during the apex you start to shift your focus and your eyes towards the exit of the corner to make sure that you use the exit line that you really planned to do and then that kind of repeats uh, corner by corner. It's important to be consistent, it's important to build your speed throughout the weekend and making sure you're not putting your foot wrong so it's just a continuous crescendo trying to build up that ultimate lap time. For me personally in terms of workload Monaco is the toughest because there's no time to to rest. It is literally corner after another and uh, even the straights, they're not really straights, it's always turning a bit and uh, I would say the main straight in Monaco is the, the biggest breathing space we, we get but even that goes pretty quickly with the, with the car. It's really challenging, really mentally loading and you're all the time picking up different reference points um, to make you faster.